actually going to start by saying that it's a both, birds of a feather, for those who are not familiar. I didn't bring pretty slides, actually, because I hope this will be more of a discussion. Um, and I wanted to start, so this is all about Zephyr and Zephyr documentation. So I will actually start with a question, which is who in the room is using Zephyr? Okay, and who is contributing to Zephyr? And was a maintainer, maybe, to some, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's, um, and are we good with the slides, or? Hey, so, I should maybe quickly introduce myself. For those who don't know me, I'm Benjamin. I work at the Linux Foundation as a uh, developer advocate for the project and jack of all trades. Um, one thing that I do, we try and make sure that our documentation is looking good, that it's helpful for all the personas that, and all the kind of people that might get involved with Zephyr, first time con users, first time contributors, people who use Zephyr on a daily basis, uh, like maintainers, et cetera, et cetera. One thing that we did, and it ran for a bit over a month, is, and I, I'm making sure that you get a chance to flash the code if you didn't have a chance to take the survey just yet. Um, we tried and asked the Zephyr community at large the things they like about the Zephyr documentation, the, see, the things that maybe could be improved. And so some of the insights from this particular survey are gonna feed, I hope, the discussion um, today, but also, your feedback will be uh, very, very helpful. So yeah, it's been, uh, well, pretty much exactly a month, I guess, uh, since it went live and we had, to my surprise, that kind of, uh, uh, it tells something, I guess, about the size of the Zephyr community, but yeah, we had uh, over 80 respondents. Um, most of the promotion of the survey, you may have seen it, was through the Zephyr Discord, the Zephyr social channel, so the feedback is probably biased one way or the other, like it's, Definitely like the Zephyr crowd, sort of by definition, we took the survey. Um, but yeah, some questions that we asked, like nothing specific, I guess, there, but um, trying to understand better what are the kind of people uh, using Zephyr, their experience level, because you suddenly have different expectations, whether you are a, like, yeah, a, a hobbyist uh, that just that just getting started with uh, uh, hacking with uh, Arduino and looking at, at, what, at what could be next or whether you're actually a um, Google or a Intel building embedded controllers and whatnot like we saw in uh, several keynotes at the uh, event this week. Um, what do you like, dislike, what do you feel is missing? Um, and some of the themes that emerged and some of them I'm gonna uh, dive deeper into is things like searching for information in the Zephyr documentation. For some people it's actually working very well for some, not necessarily, um, and kind of related uh, people um, finding it hard sometimes to um, to search for, hey, I wanna know whether my particular board supports this or that in Zephyr. So, like some kind of questions are, are hard to get answered uh, when uh, navigating the Zephyr documentation. Navigating actually is something else. Uh, um, several people um, commenting on the fact that if your if your thing is browsing more through the maybe the API documentation, you might find lots of information there, but not necessarily the pointers that would take you to actual concrete uh, examples uh, or actual code. Uh, and like having those bridges, uh, I mean, there might be some that are missing, so we'll we'll try and double click on that. Lots of people commenting on the fact that we have lots and lots of great samples, most of them up to date, really helpful to get started, um, but maybe too, ba too basic in that uh, they only cover like a particular feature, uh, people asking for more like end-to-end, -end, more comprehensive um, samples, tutorials, going all the way potentially to like more best practices. Um, uh, some other thing that I think we will uh, get to discuss maybe to more towards the end, but uh, some people do care a lot about having PDFs and having something that they could uh, download offline. I mean, not lots of people, but this is certainly some feed, some useful feedback there. Some people also being like, "Hey, I'm not a native English speaker. What's the what's the story there?" Um, so, in a nutshell, I could have almost like, uh, I mean, most of the keywords there are actually verbatim feedback. Uh, many many people are like. This is good. Your stuff is up to date. Uh, it's very, very extensive. It's honest, which, I mean, yeah, it, I guess 
therefore being an open source project as opposed to maybe some like commercial solution, whenever there's an API that's just experimental and, and that has some uh, shortcomings or some, some, I mean, it's usually actually right there in the documentation, uh, which by the way, the documentation lives with the code, which people um, uh, really uh, value because that helps with the up-to-date, I guess, aspect. Um, there's more than just generated documentation. People appreciate the fact that there's uh, um, many, if not all the maintainers of, of all the areas of this Zephyr take the time to add actual like text and human written uh, architecture, descriptions, diagrams, etc. The samples, it's like pretty much every other um, respondent who says, hey, your samples are great. Now to some of the pain points and there, like I want to dive into some ideas, open brainstorming on things that, I mean, that's some of the pain points uh, that, that people um, uh, sort of commented on. Some are actually already uh, in the process of being fixed or already fixed, so I, I want to dive a bit into that too. Um, until recently, at least, it was sometimes hard to get like from a, um, a search engine such as Google or anything really, like uh, trying to search for Zephyr information, you would land on Zephyr 2.3 whatever old uh, documentation, um, which uh, is not necessarily helpful. Um, the internal um, search, in, like when you're already in the documentation, uh, this is something that some people are complaining about, like the accuracy or the sort of the ranking of the, the, the results could be better there. Um, I put that as a pain point, like the, the fact that people want more tutorials, more, more best practices, uh, it's only something that came often and I really want to discuss about that. Um, some like differences, like in some areas, some boards would be uh, uh, better documented than others. Uh, it's uh, just wanted to surface it as this is something that came. Uh, by the way, I should mention that the slides will be online and uh, towards the like in the backup section of the slide deck. Uh, there's the uh, all the um, anonymized version of, of all the feedback with all the like the charts, etc. Uh, I encourage everyone to to check it out, um, and we can always discuss uh, offline if you um, want to get involved or uh, have thoughts there. Um, there's also I think something that's uh, important, especially with the crowd we have here today. Um, the kind of feedback that's more um, uh, geared towards people who actually contribute to Zephyr and that may be in a position where they are writing documentation. Um, some things that could be improved is that setting up the local build infrastructure for the doc specifically um, might not be ideal. Uh, at, at best, it takes time to build the documentation, so um, things could probably be improved there. And one thing that came that often comes, and not, not only in the survey, is um, architecture diagrams. We have many of them, and many of them, like if you are a contributor, you probably know that some of them are like PNG files that are baked into the documentation, and like you have this nice architect architecture diagram, sorry, from two years ago, which you would really like to update uh, for, because, I mean, things have changed, except that you don't know who came up with this particular PNG, and you cannot, you would have to recreate it from scratch, uh, which is not ideal either. Um, all right, so, yeah. Some of those things are actually already fixed. So just as an update to, uh, to, to the community, I guess I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know, and maybe you've experienced that um, when nowadays, when you search for some Zephyr, how to like, create a thread in Zephyr sort of stuff, hopefully the top one, two, three results will always bring you to, um, to the latest ver um, version of the documentation. So this should be uh, much, much better now. Um, one thing that we did as well is uh, what you have at the, at the bottom right of, of the, the slide is that when you are on the Zephyr documentation itself, uh, we're not listing any more like pretty much all the versions of Zephyr since day one, we only list the ones that are effectively supported, which is the current LTS, plus the past couple releases, and that should also help with the whole um, search um, engine um, indexing situation. Uh, yeah, and like that's just a, a way to show you that until, oops, I almost fell there. Uh, until, until about a month ago, you would have, yeah, people searching for how to create a thread with Zephyr and they would be taken all over the place to Zephyr 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, whatever. Now, hopefully, when you search for information, you get taken either to only Zephyr latest or 
to LTS if you really care about like LTS specific information. Um, one thing, as a sort of a segue uh, into the other topics, um, one thing that I've been looking into um, these days is, and this is where I will effectively uh, want to open it up to, to, to you all, um, there are some more modern uh, themes and like documentation infrastructures out there. We're not necessarily changing everything in terms of how we do things. Uh, there might be some low-hanging fruits. Um, one thing, and I want, actually want to show a demo, is uh, a different theme for the same documentation uh, infrastructure that we use, which is Sphinx, the immaterial theme, which would potentially bring us interesting things in terms of having editable figures, uh, having improved search engine, having potentially better um, uh, rendering on like tablet or like mobile phones, which we don't necessarily always have with the um, uh, with the uh, the current infrastructure. So um, yeah, just actually a quick demo um, of how things look like, and maybe starting with sort of uh, sorry, just there, yeah. um, like so that's Zephyr documentation today. Um, if you were to search for something like say. QMU, you would get the results on the right, which to my point earlier and to the point of some respondents, this might or may not be, uh, might or might not be the best sort of uh, uh, set of results, because I mean, if I only search for, Q for QMU, I probably want maybe, I think this result actually, the one that will explain to me how to uh, develop on top of QMU. But anyways, that's how things look like, generally speaking, with Zephyr. The other theme that I mentioned, I think, could bring interesting um, and yeah, quick demo of how things look like for this guy. Um, so I didn't spend time to like use the fancy Zephyr purple and whatever. It's uh, pretty much the stock um, colors there. But searching for QMU, this is kind of a different story. I think it makes, but I would like to hear from you. I think this makes things uh, slightly um, better in terms of identifying are those search results really relevant to what I'm looking for? Like, I only search for QMU, but it's showing me way more context in terms of what are the, the pages that match, but more specifically, what are the, the different sections, subsections, and uh, yeah, that can actually uh, help, I think. Um, another thing that the theme uh, does as well is that, um, and we have a demo right, right here, uh, for the editable, uh, diagrams thing, like if I were to be interested in having some kind of second sequence diagram somewhere in the documentation, it could actually live right in the documentation, uh, just using the, the mermaid.js um, framework. Sorry, what's that? Um, um, so you, you can, uh, yeah, you could edit, uh, you could have a an inline sequence diagram and whoever comes after you and needs to edit it, well, it's there um, in source pretty much. And you can have state diagrams, you can have, which to some extent we already have with uh, uh, GraphViz, uh, some of those diagrams we can already um, sort of have in, in Zephyr. But I mean, the mermaid, mermaid goes way, way further. Uh, but to some extent, switching from one theme to the other might be disruptive to the community. So I don't know what you guys think. Like even navigation wise, you may have realized that, um, and going back to the actual Zephyr thing, uh, I kind of like the, the fact that the table of contents, which by the way, is not ideal um, uh, for, for, I think for, for the project. Um, here, when you uh, use this new theme, and if I were to, I don't know, like uh, look at memory protection, this is sort of the really high level uh, outline and table of contents, but then on the right-hand side, you have the one that's more uh, geared towards and, and focused on the current page that I'm browsing. And that might make things easier, including like having things that are API related, they would show up like slightly differently. So yeah, maybe before I sort of like jump into other topics, any, any thoughts, any feedback there from what you see or any, yes, please. Uh, th so there's a mic right there or just speak loud and I will just repeat your question. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think there, there might be different. Uh, so the, the question or the comment is that uh, to some extent it might be kind of weird that you have the 
outline split uh, uh, part on the left, part on the right. Uh, there might be ways to tweak it, but yeah, I agree. That I actually was confused at first, um, uh, and that might not be the best way to present the information. Yes. Uh, yes. Maybe if uh, if we think that you know changing all of a sudden would be disruptive, maybe we can do a uh, new documentation beta and host it like this version simultaneously for people to try out and then yeah. get feedback. Like A-B testing almost. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought about that just before the, the, yeah, that would be one way to do it. Um, yeah. Yes? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that, thanks, that's good feedback. Yes, Dave? When you did the, uh, the search, um, that, that's, uh, that's one of my big problems with the Zephyr documentation is the search because like you said, it, it tends to throw up a lot of stuff and it's, just, it's almost easier to go into Google and search that way because Google indexes it better, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but how did, uh, on the QMU one that you asked in particular, kind of interested in figuring out how it like, figured out running QMU directly, running QMU via ninjas. Are those subtech topics inside of Zephyr or is it, did it somehow? So yeah, the, um, so without necessarily going into all the details, which I don't necessarily understand everything in the Sphinx framework, but they have their custom, um, definitely non-Google based, like when you build the documentation, uh, it builds an index based on like page title, page, page headings, which gives uh, potentially a score for each and every keyword. And so the fact that for the, within the application development page, there are several headings uh, and several like sections that, are, that have QMU in them. So that contributes a bit to having this page ranking a bit uh, higher than others. And then inside the sections themselves, the keyword shows up again. So that, that's why that it ends up uh, showing that high. But quite frankly, I don't know why this one is number two, and then why the other one, which doesn't seem to have as much matches, shows up number first. So, um, yeah. huh? It's a quad, sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, actually, you're absolutely right. Uh, with this, yes, uh, yes, so all, all the matches um, there are the ones that are ranked 50 or something, and 50 is the maximum with this particular implementation of the built in index. So, actually, that's one. Great segue into um, one uh, open question to you all. Uh, I was playing just before with, um, I mean, yes, we are an open source project, uh, but I think we want to provide a great experience to the, uh, to the, to the users. Um, one thing that I was playing with earlier and, and that we could really, really easily include into the documentation is, and just ignore, by the way, the, the ads. Like this is the, uh, there is this Google thing where you can have your custom Google search engine that's just tailored to your domain or subdomain, and then it would give you whatever you would effectively get from Google proper, um, except that you can really easily host it on your website. So if I were to search for QMU, and we could, we could very well have this particular search bar baked right into, um, into Zephyr and get results that I think are way better ranked, uh, or at least like, uh, they feel like they are uh, uh, better matches. Um, but I mean, implementing that uh, means that either this needs to be something that, I mean, we all agree is a good idea and we baked into uh, the project and or this is an option. Uh, uh, like we, uh, we still for, for Zephyr.org, we still like use the, the built-in index, but anyone who builds the doc locally could enable the feature. Like, I don't know, like if people have thoughts there. One thing also before um, uh, people maybe comment on that is part of the reason that the results there um, might not be that helpful is that historically, like if you look back in time, um, at some point um, there were some tweaks that were made because some people would like, let, let me just show you actually what I mean by that. Um, so just picking this randomly, but searching for STM32, you, depending on your profile or persona, you might or might not want 
uh, this to actually show you boards from STM32. And it actually probably won't, because the boards will be like very, very, very penalized by the, our built-in search engine by design, because at some point back, like five years ago, people were like, no, when I look for um, uh, GPIO, I don't want to get results that will tell me that whatever NXP board or whatever STM32 board has GPIO, I care about getting the deoxygen dock for GPIO. But that was people like five years ago that, that pushed that kind of change, uh, which is why like, yeah, indeed, when I look for GPIO, it will likely be more like the bindings and or uh, the oxygen th stuff that, that shows up first. But that might be, uh, there might be some easy fixes there. Um, so yeah, thoughts on the Google thing. If you get the mic, that's even better. Good. I'm working four years with Zephyr, and uh, first I want to say is a lot of improvement in the documentation. And uh, I was also a teacher on a university for control science, yeah, and was a, a very difficult topic. And what we recognized is, so for those, I think for all those guys sitting here, uh, it's not so difficult to find the topic. For me, the difficulty was if there is a new philosophy, and device tree is one of this, which we tackled somehow, yeah. I think we are still not on a, a very professional level here. Uh, the other topic is unit testing, what we want to tackle now in the next time, and probably we want to contribute in terms of a, a tutorial then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But for these things, you know, it's somewhere there, you see some piece of code, but you do not understand the philosophy then. Right, yeah. Yeah, and if you do not understand the philosophy, you need to start from scratch, and if you start, uh, this is at least for me, uh, my brain is old, yeah, and it's also small, uh, the best way I learn is if there are 100 things, uh, people do not tell me about 90. <laughs> they tell me about 10 things because 10 things I can keep in mind, maybe, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this is really a challenge in, in, in didactic way. It's about the tutorials, and I think this, this is the challenge here. And the question is, how we get started with this and what we think uh, when we now yeah, try to do this unit testing. So we found the Google guy, he, he said he will help us in, in Discord, yeah? Mm -hmm. And what I usually do, or sometimes do if I have time, I write my own paper, yeah? Right. So I write an eight-pager and then see, yeah, does this match then? And well, I contributed think, back to the project, like... And, and this is what we would then use some, somebody, if we write this down, uh, the next step is, is this correct how we extracted it, yeah? Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, you understood this not, but probably this is the process for this. So as long as we are newcomer, uh, we can do this task once we know it, and maybe it's too late for us, we need mm -hmm. a new newcomer then, yeah? yeah. Okay. And, but uh, I think to summarize this, I think the difficulty is, it is very complex, it's very powerful, but for the newcomer, you need to start with a subset, which is a, let's start only with these things, we explain it, and now here are the samples, yeah? here are yeah. 10 samples, run it, so when, when you internalize it, yeah. then these are the next 10 topics, so I explain it, and now these are the samples. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, so w was there another question, because otherwise I would, yeah, please. question, just well, comment on the yeah. search stuff. Um, at least the, the Google one seemed much more usable than alphabetic, which was only useful by chance because of application. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I had a second thought. What was, what was before the Google search? What was shown before the Google search stuff? Sorry, what's that? What was the slide before the Google search? Uh, we talked a bit about the um, uh, images, like the, the figures, like diagrams that you could maybe uh, yeah, maintain as code. They could, wasn't that, anyway. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, one thing, uh, yes, please, uh, right there. If you, um, one thing that could be also a challenge with the Google thing, which, I mean, I, I would love for us to uh, have that in the documentation. Uh, right now, the, the index that we have might su suck to some extent, but everything works offline. If we were to rely on like some sort of server side, it doesn't even have to be Google, but server side search engine, then people who want to run the docs locally uh, might be in trouble. But 
That's a great point. Um, that's something actually I did on the trainway here is I, I built the docks on my, uh, you know, Sandy Bridge laptop. And I noticed it takes a lot longer than you'd expect. <laughs> is it? It does. Well, you know, it's an old, old 10-year-old machine. So okay. um, anyway, um, very banal question. Um, I like the new theme so far. And okay. um, I'll it's also... It's not new. I mean, it's a, an attempt or like just showing oh, what... attempt what, to it, yeah, yeah. yeah. A very banal question. Uh, how's the dark theme for us night owls? <laughs> Good question. Oh, uh, yeah, well, the, that's, let, let's just look at the, the actual, like, um, the, yeah, because that's, I really didn't tweak. Um. <laughs> give me a minute there. No worries. There. Ah, that's, so okay, that's not that's Zephyr, nice. that's the, the upstream sort of demo of things in material, but that's, I think that would be a better way to get, to give you a sense of how things are, are going there. Yeah, that's nice and readable. I also kind of like the, the, bit of, the bit of the better categorization on the right with the API specific stuff. Um, because I, I found it was pretty straightforward that, you know, left you have the general sort of topics uh, mm -hmm. in, in the main documentation, and right you have the page-specific stuff, so. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, good feedback. Uh, but yeah, doc theme is actually um, pretty important. Yeah. Um, Do you have a comment? Yeah. Just, just one thing, and I'm completely, possibly this off the point, but it feels to me that, like, if you have a search, like a freeform search on your website or whatever, like then it's it's either has to be has to work very well or has to be very simple i see what you mean yeah because you're going to ask simple things anyways uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah maybe maybe have a search for just titles mm -hmm. and direct for everything else to google because that's the best we can have except maybe uh you know something like chat gpt or stuff mm -hmm. yeah no like um yeah i, I get your point just sure. just just my feeling like if i go in search there like it's it's often frustration and you feel like you cannot find it. So yeah. uh, that's that's bad user experience, I think. Yeah. And for what it's worth, and that's probably actually your approach to many people said that use the code look. Like, I mean, they would just like, as a, as a beginner, and I have a few slides on that, you would use the online documentation, but as soon as you're like starting develop, to develop with Zephyr, well, you just grab you know, somewhere in the code and that's the doc. Um, yeah, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, quickly, and I think you sort of hinted at the fact that you were building the docs. Uh, for those who care about like getting better experience uh, when building um, the documentation locally, uh, we are certainly looking at uh, improving things there because even if you have like a really good machine, it can be man, 12, 15 minutes to build the doc from scratch locally. You do a small change and it might not be that well uh, um, managed in terms of doing a, a nice incremental build. So even if you just change a line, it will be another 15 minutes. We, yeah, we, it's work in progress there. Uh, just something that I wanted to share, uh, especially maybe for the contributors and the maintainers, uh, things that you might or might not realize. And it's either you see it as a challenge or just at least a fact. Um, People browsing the documentation and using the internal search engine, what do, you, do they search for? They don't necessarily search about how to do Bluetooth audio broadcast or how to do low power on uh, ARM Cortex M7, blah, blah, blah. They seem to be, at least like in the top search results, they look at pretty basic concepts, right? And so actually for some of those keywords, and as we saw to some extent, like QMU is, I don't know, like top 10 keyword that people uh, search. Uh, are we giving them uh, helpful information and the best results that we can? Maybe not. Um, kind of related, and I think, do I have, the, yeah, the next slide is also kind of related. Uh, it's not perfect, because, uh, uh, and that's my next topic, uh, but looking at what are the top viewed boards in the documentation, it's very much maker or DIY oriented, right? And that's something to have in mind. Like it's, uh, whether we like it or not, like the community is just so big that uh, all sorts of crowds uh, are using uh, Zephyr or looking into Zephyr, including people which is like, yeah, they're gonna run uh, Zephyr on Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Pico, sort of stuff. Um, but um, this is also to be taken with a grain of salt in that for those who are like closely involved in the project, uh, you probably know that we don't um, we dropped again another Google product, the Google Analytics support uh, in 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 the in the in the documentation. So, as we look at making the documentation better, I think it's important to have access to good and accurate uh, metrics. 
Um, this is definitely accurate because I actually went and looked into the. L yes. Yeah, just wanted to point out that it, it, that is in in order, right? Of what is most accessed, not the top ten. Top ten in order. The previous slide. Sorry, say again. The like the number one was RPI Pico, right? Yes. So it's sorted. yes, yes, yes. So That's the number um, one access board is a board. Yeah. That but is based based on because um, yeah. we don't have Google Analytics anymore. Based okay. on the hits. <laughs> On the server, um, like on the, on the server side, I would look at the logs of our um, um, yeah. Amazon S3 buckets, blah blah blah, and this is based on like um, how many times people like fetched this particular URL. It might not be unique people, like, but I kind of I'm fairly confident that, and that's why I didn't put like numbers in front of them. Yeah, but, but the think, ordering, I'm pretty confident. But I think it's interesting that the first one it's a board that is contributed. Yes. There's no. It's not officially maintained by. Yes. The yeah. yeah. And so is probably there might be others um, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's probably not very used for commercial product either. So sure. Yeah, that's, but, but that, that's a great opportunity for yeah. attracting new user. I would, yeah. I would yeah. imagine it, it's, yeah. the, it's popular and it always gets used with the Raspberry Pi SDK, which locks the software into that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do wonder how many people end up there by mistake, and I've just Googled yeah, well, Raspberry Pi Pico. Yeah, and that's like, part of the things that are hard, even harder to know and to, to tell, because, uh, yeah, I'm really looking at the hits on the server side. It might be just, like, bots. It's not like people, who, it's not necessarily people who actually open the page well, on their not, machine. Not bots, but they just Googled Raspberry Pi Pico, and if Zephyr is the second link there. Yeah, but, but that's goodness, though. That should be sure. a good way for, for us to um, to bring even more people into uh, into Zephyr. But yeah, I thought I would share as a sort of an FYI. I mean, don't you have a referral URL in the logs, like where the people are coming from? Yes, I, uh, we, we can. And these we can. are without referral URL. This, these results are without the referral. It's all, all hits on, on this particular URL. OK. Uh, so, I mean, the question about like, where the, if the people are searching just for Raspberry Pi Pico, mm -hmm. or they're actually interested in Zephyr. Yeah, that, though, so um, for those who are into SEO and like web analytics, like this information is not available anymore. Uh, like for the past couple of years, like you, you would know that they come from Google, you wouldn't know the actual keywords, sadly. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you guys can try, like if you want to, Try and like what are the kind of keywords that we give the hit? Um, um, yeah, sharing. So by the way, thanks for the engagement there. That's super, um, super cool. Um, yeah, a piece of feedback more maybe for the maintainers and contributors. But I, I felt that this particular one is like we're going to click on the link and it, it really. I think this person uh, provided really uh, useful feedback. For some high-level pages um, like PWM, it would be great to be able to navigate from the API documentation to samples that are relevant. I mean, the, the sample is probably easy to find, but it, let's click on the link. Like, there's so old theme. Oh, yeah, it looks, doesn't look as nice, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the PWM API documentation seems pretty, pretty complete, but pretty um, bare bones also to some extent. Like it, it's true, I think, that it could be linking to samples in the code base uh, and or like, I mean this, and PWM is kind of those features that which possibly every other um, user and developer will be, uh, will end up using anyways. And what that person said is that uh, either like sending people, I mean, sending me to the code samples would have been nice or even having some kind of code snippet, which I could literally copy paste because that's what I do as a developer, uh, full honesty here, uh, is what the person said. And yeah, that's. Um, so, yes, Mohamed? I kind of second that because, and also it would be nice if you have from GitHub back to the Zephyr documentation because sometimes I stumble on like GitHub sample, and it would be just nice to have, okay, I have that sample in the region. Yeah, take me right in the, the yeah, the right place in the community. Yes. Yep. 
Yes. Hey, um, yeah, some, uh, one more comment on the, uh, the search functionality. Yes. So uh, maybe as a sort of in-between solution between going full, you know, online Google search versus, um, you know, the, the flawed current inbuilt search is maybe adding metadata to the, t um, to the, the actual files such as, um, I, I was just quickly checking the uh, Sphinx doc and there seems to be a, a file-wide metadata in, in chapter 10, uh, 1.10. So maybe you can specify tags, like you said with QMO, you can say, okay, this, hmm. uh, this document has QMO, this mentions QMO x86, yeah. or you have a list of tags, and then the search function would prioritize tags, and after that default to the previous um, current search functionality, which would kind of maybe, bit, I, I think it would give a lot better results. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Or even like, yeah, indicating that this particular thing should never ever match this particular keyword, although the, maybe the search engine would have tended to, yeah, that's, that's um, hmm. all right. So I, we are actually going to run out of time uh, pretty soon. Uh, search, I think we covered uh, kind of like another in-between solution could be, um, uh, so Im we could improve the local, JavaScript, mostly JavaScript-based um, search engine that Sphinx has. We could certainly look at Google, and there's also other uh, servers like Apache Solar sort of stuff, but that would require hosting um, an index somewhere, uh, which, again, I'm not sure is something we want to do because you want to sometimes browse the documentation when you're on a plane. Um, and that's, yeah, so again, running out of time, but all the topics we covered, including search discoverability, like what are the kind of boards that I could use uh, that support search or such feature, to samples, tutorials, I would love to hear from you in the mi few minutes we have left. If you know of any other open source project that's kind of like in the RTOS or IoT space, Anything that they do particularly well, just, I mean, let me know, because uh, that, that'd be great. I think, for example, Riot OS is pretty good, or at least better than us to some extent at making it easy to find what other boards that are uh, supported in their ecosystem and, and making it look prettier too. Um, uh, Reno does this nice dashboard, which helps uh, discovering the, the features also of, of, the, of the hardware. Um, I've been told, and I've seen in, in the feedback in the documentation that Free Artos or um, ARM with the CMC's Artos, they have really nice intro tutorials with more like architecture guidelines, etc. Yeah, please, like, of course we we are running out of time, but I, I'll be sitting around. Uh, I think this is important to 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 take uh, uh, yeah good good feedback from other, and good um, inspiration from others. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much what I had. Did we have anyone online with comments or questions? We didn't. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, let's take the rest of the conversation uh, to the reception, maybe. Stop. All right, thank you very much for the engagement.